Thanks guys. Yeah, finals might be winding down, but there's still a lot happening with Hawkeye sports. First, let's talk some Hawkeye wrestling. Redshirt freshman Alex Marinelli was named Big Ten Wrestler of the Week. He ranked 13th in the nation at 165 pounds and tallied a pair of wins in his collegiate debut this past weekend at Rutgers. Marinelli earned his first career fall this weekend, taking down Maryland's Brendan Burnham in two minutes. This Big Ten Conference honor is the second of the season, with Michael Kemmerer receiving honors on November 28th, but this marks the first of Marinelli's career. The seventh-ranked Hawkeyes will be back in action December 29th and 30th at Northwestern, where they will compete in the Ken Craft Midlands Championship. And the Iowa women's basketball team has been on a roll so far this season. And there is one player gathering national attention. DITV's Natalie Acapetti has more. Coming from a smaller town, Port Wing, Wisconsin, and being ranked 12 at her position and number 18th in her class by ESPN Hoops her senior year, the Hawks are lucky to have this powerful 6-3 forward. If she's not one of the best centers in America, I don't know who is. I mean, she continues to just, she, she gives me a wow moment. She gives me, you know, I, I see some of the things that she does on the floor. I, I'm, and I'm in awe uh, of her abilities. After being on first team all conference last season and averaging 18 points and 10 rebounds per game, junior Megan Gustafson now is ranked fifth nationally in seven different categories, including double doubles and defensive rebounds. Megan, you know, has two points at halftime. How many leading scores of teams would come to the bench and not be upset? I'm not getting the ball. I'm not scoring my points. I'm nope. Even keel the whole time. You know, we talk about how mentally strong or physically strong Megan is. She is just as strong mentally. I mean, her it, her mental composure is incredible. Gustafson has received multiple awards so far in her junior year season. She has been named Big Ten Women's Basketball Player of the Week honor roll and has earned conference recognition in each of the first five weeks of the season. She currently holds 11 in her career. Being able to have that mentality that, you know, I need to come in and I need to get my, get my rebounds, I think that's something that really um, gets our offense going sometimes. You know, if I get a defensive rebound, we get the ball back. You know, if I get an offensive rebound, we get another shot. And I'm able to work hard down low, but at the same time get my teammates open. Um, you know, it's just great to see everyone sharing the ball and everyone contributing. Above all of her success, Megan Gustafson's team will always be one of her priorities. Reporting for Iowa Women's Basketball, I'm Natalie Acapetti with DITV Sports. Megan and the Hawks will be back in action at Northern Iowa on Sunday at 2 p.m. Well, their season may not have ended the way they had hoped, but the Iowa volleyball program is heading in the right direction. For the second straight season, the Hawks finished with a winning record, the first time the program has had back-to-back -back winning seasons in over 25 years. And although the team came up just short of earning that NCAA tournament bid this season, they've put themselves in a position to be on the ballot, a big step up from where they've been in the past. Progress has been um, obvious. It's been remarkable at times, um, but it's been slow and steady at other times, and patience is the hardest part. And um, there's no doubt that uh, we had a lot of work to do to get it to this point even. I think first year coming in, we were high hundreds um, RPI, and we've kind of chipped away each year. And um, last year, I think we finished in the 70s. This year, we're right there at 50 and on the bubble. So when I first got here, like, the thought of making the NCAA tournament was like not really in the picture and obviously we didn't make it this year but we were so so close and like even though that's hard it was like still so cool to bring the program to a place where we're expecting to make the tournament and disappointed if we don't so. And I just see us as being a viable competitor inside the league now and so does our team. That's the most important part. Um, they're the ones that have to do it out there on the court so they have to believe. It's not enough for me to believe in them, they have to believe in themselves. It is an easy climbing to the top when you play in the toughest conference in the nation, but Coach Shemansky and the Hawkeyes will continue that mission to becoming a strong and competitive force in the Big Ten. On Friday night, students tried to stay dry as they participated in the most popular intramural at Iowa, Canoe Battleships. DITV's Jacob Sinstead has more. It is the end of an era here at the Fieldhouse. Canoe Battleships will no longer be an intramural after tonight. They're going to be doing necessary renovations to the Fieldhouse, but for the last night, teams are going all out. I haven't gotten to cover it yet. I want to see what the buzz is all about. In this action-packed, close combat, intramural teams would line up and fire away at each other with buckets full of water in this absolute brawl. It's just constant adrenaline rush, you know, you're just looking out on both sides of you trying to trying to like fend off enemies, but um, 
Thankfully, we made an alliance at the beginning of the round, you know, helped us out a little yeah. bit. The intramural is so popular with students that it can actually put stress on the people organizing the event. When you have 100 people showing up all at the same time, uh, and you're trying to get lane lines ready and all that, but it's, it's so much fun to see everybody having a good time. I mean, these are the events that make me love my job. While it may seem like buckets are being thrown every which way and it is total chaos, there's actually a lot of team communication needed in order to sink other canoes. When you're attacking, you just kind of go for broke and hope you don't tip the canoe in the process. We're yelling at our boat guide to back up, but sometimes he hears us, sometimes he doesn't. You just gotta do what you can. They had a mascot and a shark showed up. Everyone was having a good time. Boats were sinking left and right, water's flying. It was absolutely crazy, but a great event to go to. Reporting from the Fieldhouse, I'm Jacob Senstead, Daily Iowan, TV Sports. That looked like a lot of fun. It's sad to see the intramural is ending, but if they ever bring it back, we'll have a form a, to D, a DITV. And that's all I have for you in the sports studio today. Tune in tomorrow morning as we will update you for both, both men and women's basketball. And we will have a special feature on a man who has been reporting on Iowa athletics for over 20 years. Guys, back to you at the desk.